Thank you, Dr. Shin, Dr. Ryu. I should make clear the uh, usual disclaimer. The views I am expressing today are my own and not those of any organization with which I am or have been affiliated. Uh, with a new American president, political turmoil in South Korea, and the usual insanity in Pyongyang, it is time for those of us who pay attention to what is happening in North Korea to start thinking outside the box. And we are in a box. Thanks to past political uh, mistakes. The people of North Korea are trapped in a national prison, subjected to terrible humanitarian abuses and deprivation by the cruel, deranged Kim family regime. And the rest of us are subjected to the mounting danger from North Korea's escalating nuclear weapons, ballistic missiles programs, and now we have evidence of a strong chemical uh, weapons program as well. <laughs> Concerns and attitudes in the West have hardened over the years, even before the U.S. election brought the Trump administration to power. In his book on China, Henry Kissinger described the ominous gravity of North Korea's nuclear program in stark terms. Quote, the spread of these weapons into hands not restrained by the historical and political considerations of the major states augurs a world of devastation and human loss without precedent, even in our age of genocidal killings." Unquote. Pyongyang's expanded ability to threaten its neighbors and even the United States has grown with its development of longer range ballistic missiles. That, together with the ongoing mass abuse of virtually the entire North Korean population, has convinced international public opinion that something must be done but what? Some have recommended a return to the negotiating table. <clears throat> but Kissinger wrote in 2009, quote, it is time to face realities. This is the 15th year which the United States has sought to end North Korea's nuclear program through negotiations. These have been conducted in two-party talks and six-party forums. The result was the same, whatever the framework. If this pattern persists, diplomacy will turn into a means of legitimizing proliferation rather than arresting it." Unquote. Since then, seven more years have passed and the North Korean threat has only grown more dramatically. As Kissinger said, the West's response has had the effect of legitimizing proliferation rather than arresting it. And Pyongyang is now in a far stronger position to bargain. There remain only two alternatives to remedy the intolerable suffering of the Korean people and the mass devastation danger to the world. Either, A, <clears throat> the regime must be compelled by external and internal pressure to change its behavior, or B, the regime itself must be changed by external and internal pressure. Both courses of action involve significant risks, particularly the option of regime change. Critical to both is the role of China, North Korea's only ally and indispensable sponsor. The Kim regime simply could not last long without the massive infusion of food, fuel, and cash from China, nor could it survive indefinitely absent China's diplomatic protection at the United Nations Security Council. <clears throat> Yet Beijing has consistently refused to apply its unique economic and diplomatic pressure to compel Pyongyang to cooperate. Western officials and Asia experts, led unfortunately by Kissinger himself, have performed intellectual contortions to explain China's reluctance to intervene in a serious way. You can read more about that process in the handouts that uh, were outside and may be replaced. Worse still, China all along has been playing its own devious game, starting with its transfer of nuclear technology to North Korea through AQ Khan's Pakistan network in the mid-1980s and continuing over the years since then. As recently as 2012, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta told the Senate Intelligence Committee that China was supplying ballistic missile components to Pyongyang. China-made nuclear and missile technology 
has found its ways into the hands of weapon scientists in North Korea, Iran, Syria, and Libya. That makes China not only a leading proliferator of weapons of mass destruction, but a proliferator of proliferators. There is only one plausible explanation for China's failure to turn the screws on Pyongyang, indeed for its complicity in the regime's unlawful conduct. It is simply this. Beijing sees a nuclear-armed North Korea as serving China's strategic interests. How does that work to PRC's advantage? First, the North Korean problem has been a major diplomatic distraction and resource drain for the U.S. and its Asian allies. The growing danger from North Korea has long diverted the West's attention from the rising China threat. Second, North Korea's crimes against its population make China's own terrible human rights record seem less shocking to the outside world. Third, North Korea's outrageous international behavior has enabled China to play the role of good faith negotiating partner and responsible international stakeholder, winning in undeserved respect and prestige in the West. Fourth, it has given China huge leverage over the West on trade, Taiwan, and the South and East China Sea disputes. Washington and other capitals are reluctant to press Beijing on those issues because, as we keep telling ourselves, we need China on North Korea. But China never delivers. To change North Korea's behavior, the West must first change China's. It must be made to pay a price for enabling North Korea to create an existential threat for South Korea, Japan, and the United States. Washington must lead in imposing secondary sanctions on Chinese commercial and governmental entities that directly or indirectly assist North Korea's nuclear and missile programs or otherwise support the regime. And we must insist that the international community do likewise. In addition, the U.S. must expand its information program directed at the population and government of North Korea using a reinvigorated Voice of America, Radio Free Asia, and other unconventional means. But more than that, the strategic communications program should be directed at China itself, so the self-respecting Chinese population will know that in their name and with their resources, their leaders are keeping in power the most odious and dangerous regime on the planet. China has been condemned by human rights organizations for sending North Korean defectors right back to the humanitarian hell from which they had just escaped. When the Chinese people learn the full story of what their government is doing, they may not want to share the blame for damaging China's international reputation. The Communist Party's legitimacy would be further undermined and Beijing would need to worry more about its own political survival than Pyongyang's. Of course, there is another alternative that our leaders constantly tell us is on the table, the use of force to end the North Korean threat. In 1994, Kissinger said he once considered the option of unilaterally, quote, knocking out the nuclear capability of North Korea, if necessary, even by aerial strikes, unquote. Former Defense Secretary William Perry also initially favored the idea, but both later changed their minds. Kissinger said in 2009, quote, it would be too dangerous for us to do this alone, given the general mentality that now exists in Washington and unwillingness to support it, unquote. That was 2009. I submit that circumstances and Washington's mentality have changed. The Trump administration has shown a refreshing willingness to rethink Asia's challenges and failed U.S. responses. It may well be more receptive to some form of dramatic action, either by China and the U.S. acting in concert, possibly with Japan and South Korea, or, if necessary, by America going it alone. Yes, it would be a dangerous course, but as Kissinger has warned, we are already facing a world of devastation and human loss without precedent. At some point, the risks of inaction 
exceed the risks of action. China likes to tell us that North Korea is our problem to solve, meaning they want us to make even more concessions to Pyongyang and to even to recognize it as a legitimate nuclear power. While the option of using force is certainly not the most desirable course of action, if Beijing believed if the U.S. was seriously considering it, it might be more inclined to meet its own responsibilities to resolve the issue. That would serve the interests of all countries in the region and ultimately that of all the Korean people. It might even cause China to rethink its opposition to Korean reunification. Thank you.